Hello everyone. This is online lecture 5 of the course Network Control Systems. Today's title is Retrofit Control for Modularity in Design, Part 1. First, I show a motivating example of power systems control. In particular, we here consider the ground fault control of IEEE 68 bus test power system. In this figure, the circles represent the generators, the arrows represent the rows, and the black bars represent the buses. The thin line represents the transmission lines connecting these buses. As an external disturbance to this system, we consider the ground faults on the buses like these red marks. Such faults may occur in real world by thunderbolts falling in some facilities of power generation and transmission. A simulation result is shown when a ground fault occurs on the first bus here. As you can see here, large frequency deviation of generators occurs close to the bus fault while small frequency deviation occurs for generators distant from the bus fault. The control objective here is to reduce the magnitude of frequency deviations of generators due to such bus faults by suitably controlling the excitation system in each generator. Please note that these faults may occur on any 68 buses in the power system. So, it is important to enhance the robustness of the entire system against all of those possible faults. However, it is not easy to design and implement such a control algorithm of generators. In this power system example, a local controller of the generator is called a power system stabilizer or a PSS in short. From a viewpoint of a single manager or a controller designer like him, other designers' actions of controller design and the system replacements are considered as unknown variation of a system regarded as an unknown environment connected with a local subsystem of interest. Furthermore, the value of loads as well as the parameters of transmission lines are not fully accessible for a single designer. Therefore, it is clear that assuming the accessibility of full system information is not reasonable for large-scale power systems like this. Instead, it is reasonable to assume that each controller designer is only accessible to their own subsystem model and local measurements. Next, we explain the premise of local controller design here. A control problem here is formulated from a viewpoint of a single controller designer. For example, the local subsystem for this designer is a generator and the remaining part of the system is considered as an unknown environment which is connected to this generator. A block diagram of this system can be drawn like this. Here, G denotes the local subsystem, G bar denotes the, the unknown environment, and the K denotes a local controller to be designed. For the local controller design, we assume the following. The first item states that the entire system prior to implementing K is internally stable initially. Such an assumption is reasonable in reality because a working system in our lives, such as a power system, is actually operated in a stable manner. So, we do not have to stabilize such actually working system, but it is important to keep 
its stability when we add some local controller k. The second item here states that for the design and implementation of a local controller k, we assume the accessibility only to the local subsystem model and the local output signals denoted here by y, b, and w. Here, y denotes a usual measurement output, and the b and the w denote the interconnection input and output of the subsystem G used for the interconnection with the environment G bar. In terms of the power system's control, for example, Y represents a generator state, V denotes the local voltage, W denotes the local current. Furthermore, the evaluation output Z denotes the frequency deviation and the disturbance D denotes the disturbance due to bus faults. Based on this premise, we define the notion of retrofit control like this. A dynamical controller K, which is generally a map from the local signals Y, V, W to U, is set to be a retrofit controller if the entire feedback system here is kept internally stable for any environment G bar such that the pre-existing system denoted here by G pre is internally stable. The pre-existing system is defined as a feedback system of G and G bar, which corresponds to the original system prior to implementing the retrofit controller K. The point here is that we consider all possible environments such that the pre-existing system is initially stable. So, a retrofit controller is not a stabilizing controller for unstable systems, but it is a stability-preserving controller which can be designed and implemented based on local information of the subsystem model and output. The term retrofit is a combination of a retroactive and a refit, which represents an upgrade of a part of systems. Okay, let's overview here the remaining contents in this lecture. In this lecture, we take a state space approach to find a retrofit controller. In particular, a retrofit controller is found as like this state space realization where the output signals of Y and B are used. This block diagram shows the internal structure of this retrofit controller, which is a map from YB to U. In fact, we can also consider the case where all local signals YBW are used, but we will discuss the case of using only YB just for simplicity of explanation. An important mathematical technique to find this retrofit controller is hierarchical state space expansion which produces a redundant realization of the pre-existing system to control. And at the end of this lecture, a numerical example of ground fault control in power systems will be shown to demonstrate practical significance of retrofit control. First, I describe the retrofit control program in a state space form. Here, the internal state of the environment G bar is denoted by X bar, and its system matrices are denoted by the symbols with the bars. In a similar fashion, I give a state space realization of the subsystem G like this. Then, the premise of the retrofit control program can be written as like this. 
The first item represents the internal stability of the pre-existing system, which can be simply stated as the stability of this system matrix of the feedback system. The second item represents the accessibility of the local model and outputs for the design and the implementation of a retrofit controller K, where the subsystem matrices of G here and the local output signals YB are assumed to be accessible. Next, I explain why such a local controller design problem is difficult. In fact, if we ignore the environment G bar, it is easy to find a local controller K that stabilizes the isolated subsystem G. This is just a standard controller design problem. Here, just for simplicity of notation, we suppose that the controller K is static, namely it is just a matrix. However, such a simplistic approach for local controller design does not work well if an unknown environment exists. In particular, the entire feedback system whose state equation is given like this may be unstable even if the block matrix here and the lower diagonal block here are both stable. This means that a locally stabilizing controller for G may destabilize the entire system due to undesirable interference of the environment G bar. This fact will be demonstrated in the numerical example at the end of this lecture. So, we need to be careful for the entire system stability in designing local controllers. Okay, let's see how to overcome such difficulty of local controller design. The idea here is to use a state space expansion technique. Here is the state equation of the pre-existing system, which is composed of the environment state X bar and the subsystem state X. Please note that this red matrix is stable owing to assumption 1. Then we consider decoupling the terms relevant to the input U and the D by making a redundant differential equation of xi hat here. The dimension of this system is equal to the dimension of the pre-existing system here, while the dimension of xi hat is equal to the dimension of x here. Therefore, the dimension of this hierarchical realization is larger than the dimension of the pre-existing system. Please note that the terms of U and D are involved only in this blue system, which can be stabilized by the input U. For this redundant realization, this fact can be easily proven. For any external inputs ut and dt, it follows that the sum of this xi hat and xi check is equal to the original x, and then xi bar is equal to x bar. This means that the states of the pre-existing system can be reproduced from the state of this redundant realization. Please also note that the initial conditions are supposed to be zero without loss of generality. It is also clear that the model of this blue system is available because these system matrices are those of the subsystem G. Furthermore, a local controller can be easily designed for this blue system so that this feedback system is stable. Then, by the cascade structure of this redundant system, where this blue system is an upstream system, while this system is a downstream system, we can prove this lemma. 
If the upstream system is stabilized by U, then the entire feedback system is stable for any environment described by these matrices such that the pre-existing system is stable. Here, for simplicity of explanation, we supposed only a static controller denoted by k hat here, but it is straightforward to generalize this discussion to the case of dynamical controllers as well. Let's summarize here the signal flow in the hierarchical realization by a block diagram. The upstream system highlighted by the blue box is stabilized by the feedback controller here, while the downstream system highlighted by the red box is initially stable owing to assumption 1. Therefore, the control policy of U here can be a retrofit control policy because the entire system is stable for any environment jiva such that the red system here is stable. However, the implementation of this control policy is not trivial because the output y hat is not equal to the actual output y. So we need to produce this virtual output y hat in some way to implement this control policy. To produce y hat, let's recall that this equivalence holds for the hierarchical realization. Using this equality, we can actually produce the virtual output y hat by subtracting the signal C xi check from the actual output y and constructing an observer like dynamics in which the measured signal Vt is used here, like this. Therefore, as shown in this theorem, a retrofit controller can be realized as like this dynamical controller where the state x hat is just a copy of Xi check here. Its block diagram is given as like this figure where GYV denotes the input-output map of G from B to Y, whose internal state corresponds to X hat here. The logic behind this retrofit control is summarized in this slide. In fact, we can prove that the entire feedback system with retrofit controller here can be equivalently transformed into this controlled hierarchical realization by this coordinate transformation. Therefore, the entire system is internally stable for any environment jiva such that this red system is stable, whose stability is equivalent to the stability of the pre-existing system composed of jiva and g. Here, I give today's homework to you. What to prove is the fact that was stated in the previous slide. In particular, let's prove that these two realizations are equivalent in the sense of this coordinate transformation. Please look at this link for a basic knowledge about the coordinate transformation of linear systems. Okay, let's go back to the example of power systems control. Here, we suppose that each PSS designer only has their own generator model and accessible only to local output signals such as bus voltage, bus current, and the local generator states. Then, each designer designs and implements a PSS as a retrofit controller. This figure shows the control performance of designed local controllers. In particular, each bar in the graph represents the sensitivity of frequency deviation to the disturbances on generator states. 
For each generator, we consider three cases where no control is applied, a middle gain control is applied, and a high gain control is applied, represented by black, blue, and a red bars, respectively. Here, each local controller is designed as a standard LQR technique. Clearly, we can see that the local control performance for every generator increases as its control gain increases. The resultant system responses to some bus fault are shown in this slide. The upper subfigures shows the case where each of local LQRs designed in the previous slide is simply implemented as a local control, while the lower subfigures show the case where LQR-based retrofit controllers are implemented. Clearly, the simplistic decentralized control here induces the instability of the entire system. On the other hand, the LQR-based retrofit control can enhance the damping performance of the system as the control gain is increased. This result is a good demonstration for the practical significance of the retrofit control. Finally, just for reference, I explain a generalization to nonlinear systems. As shown here, a retrofit control can be used also for nonlinear systems. The basic idea is to regard the nonlinear subsystem G, represented by the dotted box here, as a feedback of its linear part GLN and a nonlinear part F. In this representation, the nonlinear part F is regarded as a part of the new environment denoted by this red box. So, the resultant retrofit control can be implemented as like this equation, where the, the output from the nonlinear part shown by the blue box is used as an interaction signal to the linear subsystem GLN. In fact, this nonlinear version was used in the power system example shown in this lecture. Okay, this is the end of this lecture. Thank you for watching this video.